Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Lydia and this is Time with Lydia, the pharmacist. Many thanks to all who have subscribed to this channel. Your support is much appreciated. This is a channel where we educate ourselves on common health problems. We look at the causes of these health problems, we look at symptoms, and we look at ways of preventing these health problems. So if you're new to this channel and you want to learn more about your health, then please don't hesitate to hit on that subscribe button and also on the notification bell so you don't miss anything that I upload. I release one video every week. Today, I'm going to be spending some time with you talking about a very interesting condition called shingles. We are going to be looking at the causes of shingles, the symptoms of shingles and ways of preventing shingles, as well as some complications of shingles. Shingles is also known as herpes zoster. It is caused by a virus called varicella zoster. Varicella zoster is the same virus that causes chicken pox. What happens is when you get chicken pox, the virus can remain inactive in the nervous system for years. A strong immune system keeps it in check, but later in life, it can be reactivated when the immune system is weakened. And once reactivated, it travels along the nerve pathway to the skin, producing shingles. Not everyone who have had chicken pox will develop shingles. It is estimated that one in four people would have at least one episode of shingles in their lifetime. It usually affects a specific area on one side of the body and it does not cross over the midline of the body. Any part of the body can be affected, including the face, the eyes and genitals, but the chest and tummy are the most common. You know, the exact cause of shingles is not known, but most cases are thought to be caused by a weakened immune system, which can result from old age. The reason being that as you age, your immunity decreases. However, young people who appear to be otherwise healthy can also develop shingles. Physical and emotional stress can also cause shingles. The reason being that stress can cause the release of a chemical that can lower your immunity. People who have recently had a bone marrow transplant or an organ transplant can also develop this condition. The reason being that some medications given in these situations can affect your immune system. Also undergoing chemotherapy or a condition such as HIV or AIDS can reduce your immunity and put you at risk of suffering from this condition called shingles. So the question now is, how does shingle present? Or how do you know that you have shingles? Shingle starts with a tingling and painful feeling. The area becomes sensitive to touch, headache and a feeling of general unwellness, a high temperature and fatigue may follow. Then a rash appears a few days later. The rash develops into an itchy cluster of fluid-filled blisters, similar in appearance as chicken pox. The blisters often appear in a bunch. They stay for about a week, during which they leak, and then they change in color and become yellowish. They then flatten and dry out. This can leave a slight scarring. The skin remains painful until the rash is gone. And symptoms can last for between two to four weeks. On the darker skin, the rash may be red, the same color as the skin, or slightly darker, and the scabs may be gray. Shingles is generally not life-threatening but it is important to see your doctor as soon as possible if you recognize any of these symptoms. 
a doctor will usually diagnose shingles based on the symptoms and the appearance of the rash. And they can prescribe antiviral drugs. And examples of these drugs are acyclovir, famciclovir, or valaciclovir. It is important to note that an antiviral will not kill the virus. Rather, it will stop the virus from multiplying. It will decrease the severity of the symptoms and prevent complications. And you know, the effect of the antiviral is best felt when they are prescribed within 72 hours of the symptoms starting. A doctor would consider referring you to a specialist when you are pregnant or the diagnosis is uncertain. Also, when you have had more than two episodes of shingles and when you have a weakened immune system or if the shingles is affecting one of your eyes. There are some things that you can do to ease the pain and these include wear loose fitting clothes. If the blisters are weeping, use a cool compress in a towel or a wet cloth a few times a day to keep it dry and clean. Cover the area with a non-sticky dressing to prevent spreading the virus and avoid the use of sticky plasters as they can slow down the healing process. You can also buy paracetamol or ibuprofen from your local pharmacy to help with the pain and make sure you read the patient information leaflets or ask the pharmacist for advice before you take these. You can also apply calamine lotion. Calamine lotion is very good because it can cool and soothe the skin to relieve itching. Do not use topical antibiotics as they can slow down the healing process. And try carrying out some gentle exercise to help keep your mind off the discomfort. One question that most people ask about shingles is that a shingles contagious? And the answer is, you cannot get shingles from someone with shingles or chicken pox. However, you can get chicken pox from someone with shingles if you have not had chicken pox before. Remember I said at the beginning that the virus that causes chicken pox is the same virus that causes shingles. The virus is spread when someone comes into contact with a leaking blister. It is not contagious if the blisters are covered or after they have dried out. Because of this risk, it is important to prevent the spread of the virus. And there are certain things that you can do. These include avoid touching the blisters, wash your hands with soap and water anytime you do, stay off work or school if the rash is still weeping, that is there is fluid leaking from the blisters and you cannot cover it until the rash has dried out. Avoid sharing towels and flannels. And avoid swimming or playing sports that allows you to make physical contact with other people. Also avoid making contact with pregnant women who have not had chicken pox before, as they could catch it and this may be harmful to the unborn child. Avoid making contact with people with a weakened immune system. Example, those with HIV and AIDS and people undergoing chemotherapy or an organ transplant. And avoid contact with babies less than one month old unless it's your own baby. Now I'm going to talk you through some complications that you can develop when you get shingles. And the first one is postapathic neuralgia. This is the most common complication of shingles and it is very severe pain that persists after the rush has gone. It occurs as a result of nerve damage and can last for months. It normally resolves between three to six months, but can last for years. And in most cases, it can be permanent. This pain can be very debilitating and can cause sleepless nights, emotional distress and depression. Secondly, there can be the development of eye problems when shingles affects the eye. 
There can be ulceration, permanent scarring of the eye, as well as the development of an inflammation of the eye. Pressure can also build up in the eye. Thirdly, there can be loss of pigmentation and scarring at the site of infection. And a bacterial infection can also occur if it is not properly treated. Another complication is called Ramsey Hunt syndrome. And this occurs when shingles affect certain nerves in your head. This can cause earache, hearing loss, dizziness, vertigo, numbness, paralysis of the face and loss of taste. This can be treated if treatment of symptoms is started early. And finally, rare complications such as inflammation of the lungs, liver, brain and spinal cord can also occur. So today I've spent some time with you talking about the causes of shingles. We've looked at the symptoms to look out for when you get this condition. And we have looked at the treatment of shingles and things you can do to ease the pain when you get this condition. Also, we have looked at some ways of preventing the spread of the virus and some complications of shingles. I hope you have learned something new today. If you have, then please give this video a thumbs up. Remember to share this information with family and friends. And please put your comments, your suggestions, and your questions in the comment section below. If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, don't hesitate to hit on the subscribe button and also on the notification bell so you don't miss anything that I upload. Thank you once again for joining me today and I hope to see you soon in my next video. Bye for now.